Gentlemen, welcome back to another Manly Man Skills. Well, I got this AR450 plate. Says so right there. On the milling machine, I'm going to teach you a skill that every schoolboy needs to know. How to remove a broken tap. And what we have here today is the rookie mistake that everybody makes. They rush out and buy a chintzy, crappy set of Chinese taps. That is to say, taps that are crappy in quality and just happen to be made in China. Now, craptacular quality taps, I think we all can agree, they're a bane on our existence here on Earth. A blight, but they are cheap and they are from China. Sidebar, I don't get my knickers in and out when somebody calls me Guai Lo. I just call them Chow Hai and we have a laugh together. No big deal. I'm getting some viewer feedback that uh, they really don't like my racist comments. Well, I will point out that China is a country and not a race. I think we all see what's going on, that they can provide, uh, the Chinese uh, country can provide good quality products, but a lot of it is absolute garbage. As far as making fun of a language, well, I make fun of every language. English, French, Spanish, fish eater, that horrible low German that's only spoken by people with throat diseases, Dutch, everything's fair game. I don't discriminate. So long story short, we're all in this together, man. Just just chill out. It's it's gonna be okay. So where was I? Yeah, um, horrible tops, rookie mistake that everybody has to make because they're cheap. Um, everybody's got one of these crappy blue boxes with the plastic uh, broken right out of it. And at least, at least this is um, sheet metal, uh, not plastic. But, um, yeah, and then you grow up and you uh, get yourself some proper taps because you realize that the cost of proper taps is far less in the long run than constantly having to try and extract these broken ones. Okay, so I'm going to show you how a home gamer like me can extract a tap easily uh, just about 90% of the time. Of course, there's many ways to skin a cat, especially if you're Chinese. Speaking of which, story time. So I had done a job in Taiwan uh, in the winter time, and uh, I had come back in the summertime to do a different job. Of course, the, uh, the agent there was the same agent, uh, so driving around. And in Taiwan, you see all these, in, in the summertime, I saw there was dogs, street dogs, everywhere, all over the place, just roaming free, it, crazy. And I had never noticed that on my previous trips, which had been in the winter time. So I asked the agent, Louis, what the hell was going on? How come all these dogs are roaming free? And uh, he laughed his ass off, laughing, laughing, laughing. And he said, ah, Mr. Christ, you see, Taiwan people think a dog very good for staying warm in the winter. <laughs> I, I thought, well, you know, a self-entitled uh, white guy thinks to myself, oh, well, that makes sense. You know, you cuddle up with your dog. Uh, and stay warm in bed, oh, that's kind of that's nice. No, 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 Mr. Chris, we eat dog in winter. Next time you come in winter, we, we pick a dog and eat. <laughs> so, ba so basically what they were doing was during the summer, they'd, they'd let these dogs go feral, just send them out to pasture, and then they'd come and uh, cultivate them in the winter time for keeping themselves warm. Heartwarming story, I know. Well, it goes to show that we're all just people we got to do what we got to do, and uh, we got our little quirks. We're all the same. Soft, juicy bags of meat and guts. Now, for authenticity, we're going to use the farmer wrench here. And uh, we're also going to make sure it goes in nice and sideways. And this was the, uh, this is the hard ox. Hard as a coffin nail to drill. So, it should be fun to tap. There we go. It's going in straight as an arrow. I just got my safety squints on here. I'm actually going to go get some safety my glasses. No more, uh, no more safety important rule than wearing your safety glasses so that when you uh, make a dunderheaded mistake and lose an arm, uh, at least the safety guy can see you got safety glasses on. Fucking joke. So the first thing we're going to do here is an act of progressive escalation. And the easy, always do the easiest thing first, right? Which never works. But uh, this is YouTube, so it is going to work. 
just take a cold chisel or a center punch or whatever and try and back it out. See it's working there so that's no good. For our purposes we want that not to come out. So what we can do to make sure that doesn't come out is we'll just uh, peen over little chunks there. Okay, there we go. Then we, what we want to do is make this flat, nice and flat. So what I got here is from an electronics supply house, um, Adafruit, and these are carbide printed circuit board drills. Now printed circuit boards of course are fiberglass and uh, you can imagine they go through the tiny little drills. So this is carbide and carbide is the paragon of materials. It cuts pretty much anything ferrous and because these are electronic supplies uh, they're cheap. Electronic stuff is dirt, dirt, dirt cheap. So anytime that we can take something from the electronics industry and mold it to our own devices, is uh, it's going to be way cheaper than going to a Thomas Skinner and Sons or, or somebody like that and actually buying a machining tool. Now, unfortunately, I don't get to say this very often, but this is a good, cheap tool for mainland China. It's like, seriously, two bucks. Now there's some debate, uh, in my mind at least, as to whether carbide actually needs any lubricant, which I don't think it does because it doesn't wet very well and nothing really sticks to it too, too bad. However, it probably could use some cooling. So uh, put a little Astroglide on there, a little dabble do ya. And we're gonna run this at uh, about warp six. Now this step isn't really necessary, but it's going to help us out in the long run. Because this, turn that drive off. Now this will give, obviously that, that this is a 1.1 millimeter uh, PCB drill and it's not as big as that chisel uh, in the web there. However, it hopefully will help us out a little bit. Now this is a stub length drill and it's gonna be nice and stiff. So we should stay on target even if we didn't have this, but I kind of, uh, I haven't used this little tiny twist drill yet, so I wanted to try it out. If you don't have a tapper rotor, then this is the way to go. Especially on the periphery, it's going to be an interrupted cut as it goes through those flutes. We want to make sure we don't uh, harden this top any more than it already is. Now there's some conjecture as to uh, whether now there's some conjecture as to whether uh, peck drilling is leaving a hardened surface, but uh, well, I guess I guess it doesn't really matter because you're just pecking to break the chip, and as you can see, these chips are already broken. And the, car the problem with tungsten carbide is it's it's really brittle. It's hard as a coffin nail, but brittle. So oh, it's not very good at uh, necessarily interrupted cuts or, or shock. Oh, there we go. And I think we're cooked on that one. Yeah, we're cooked. We actually drilled out quite a lot of it, but I think what happened was uh, some of those chowdery flute bits got in there and uh, broke off and bound up the, the bit, so 
So there's the bit there. She has obviously drilled her last. That's the way it goes sometimes. You're the fuck E and sometimes you're the fuck or. This time we were the E. Well, onwards and outwards. What are we going to do now? So here we have a tungsten carbide tipped masonry bit. We're going to dress that a little bit and uh, give that a try. You can tell it's a very high quality bit because it's got hot dip galvanizing on it. That is so cheap, it's not even tungsten carbide. It's like a little nugget of high speed steel. It will <laughs> won't even touch the hard ox. Why that was in my toolbox, I have no idea. Well, fortuitously for my pult de fay, I don't have any more carbide tip drill bits in my toolbox. However, I do have carbide burrs. So we're gonna give this a try with a carbide burr. And these are just what you put in die grinders. And these things are horrible, horrible. They get everywhere, especially on your wife's white couch. She'll sit down to a to a Grey's Anatomy after the little one is asleep, and uh, <laughs> you'll never hear the end of it. Not that I'd know from experience. Sorry about the whistle there. I sometimes forget to turn that drive off. What you're hearing is the uh, pulse width modulated uh, carrier frequency, which is, I don't know, six kilohertz. That's that high pitched whistle you hear. We're just gonna chowder the rest of that bit up. There, uh, there we go. Okay, there we have it. Hole salvaged. So there you go, carbide bird of the rescue. When life gives you limes, you make yourself some to kill you shots. There is the hole there. Now there's also a tool you can buy um, that fits inside the flutes. It's got these little tangs that go inside the flutes and it's supposed to be able to uh, remove the broken taps. I've never had any luck with them. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, they're a total waste of money. But if you have a differing opinion on those tools, please uh, put it down below. And uh, of course, the, the foolproof way to get rid of a tap is to use a tap eroder, which uh, just sends pulses of electricity in there to vaporize the tap. Chances are, though, if you're watching me, you're not going to have access to one of those things. Thanks a lot for watching. Keep your stick on the ice.